well the end of this chapter of mechanics of rigid bodies let us discuss some problems based upon the various concepts we have discussed throughout this chapter the problem we are taking now is the impact of the rigid body this is a stick of mass m and length l and linear impulse let it be j is acting as shown in the diagram at the end of the rod which is uh, perpendicular to the rod find the center mass velocity angular velocity of the rod and its kinetic energy to find the velocity of center mass we have to write by assuming this is the velocity of center mass and omega is the angular velocity of the rod impulse net impulse as equal to change in momentum that's what our impulse momentum equation says net linear impulse change in linear momentum initially the rod was at rest uh, it gains a velocity v c so the change in linear momentum of the rod is m into v c and the impulse net impulse is given that is j in this way we are getting v c is equal to j by m answer same impulse momentum equation you have to apply but here instead of linear impulse we can write net angular impulse as equal to change in angular momentum a reference point we have taken about center of mass about center of mass the angular impulse is linear impulse into l by 2 and the angular velocity increases from 0 to omega so the change in angular momentum is equal to about the center of mass is equal to ic into omega ic is equal to ml square by 12 into omega and we are getting omega is equal to j upon m l j upon m l that is omega then total kinetic energy which is equal to kinetic energy of translation plus kinetic energy of rotation translational kinetic energy half m v square rotational kinetic energy half i c into omega square we are applying three different concepts this is equal to j by m and i c is equal to ml square by 12 and omega is equal to j by 6j by ml just you are getting j square by 2m plus is ml square by 12 into 2 is 36 j square by ml square, m square l square l square l square getting cancelled m will getting cancelled we are getting m in the denominator so 3 by 2 plus 1 by 2 That's equal to j square by m. Answer. So we apply these three concepts: concept of impulse momentum equation for linear case, in angular case, and concept of translation 
and rotational cardiac energy. Adding this two, we are getting the total cardiac energy is equal to J square by M. Let us take another example. This example I have chosen from dynamics. Let us take the disc of mass m, radius r, and initially the disc is stationary. Stationary disc is placed on the plank. The plank is moved with constant acceleration and here it rolls perfectly pure rolling. This means that at this point there is no relative sliding. In this case we need to calculate the acceleration of the disc and frictional force acting on the disc. So, for this we need to draw free body diagram. Frictional force let it be backward we do not know. We may assume forward also. Let us assume that axis of the disc is AC and angular axis of the disc is alpha. This point acceleration is equal to A. Apart from this, we have the gravity and normal reaction acting on the disc. The normal reaction and gravity they pass through this point cannot produce any torque. We are following the basic principle, the center of mass method. Method 1, center of mass reference. Write the equation minus f, f is in negative x direction is equal to m into ac, force equation. Then you can just write torque equation, this to force mg and normal reaction they pass through the center of mass therefore they cannot produce any torque about the center of mass axis and the frictional force can produce a torque that is f into r in this direction that is equal to m r square by 2 that is the moment of inertia of the disc with respect to the center of mass into alpha direction torque direction and alpha direction we have assumed are same direction minus minus k cap. So, just we are getting the scalar equation f is equal to m r alpha by 2. Next, we write the kinematical equations. We start that at this point, axis of this point P is equal to A is given as a i cap a p is equal to a p c plus a c but a p c is equal to minus r alpha i cap a c we have taken a c i cap we have assumed in this direction that is equal to a i cap so a c minus r alpha that is equal to a 
let us solve the equations. We have three equations. We have three unknown quantities: AC alpha and uh, the frictional force. The three unknown quantities and three equations: one, two, and three. So from equation one, calculate AC. Substitute here. From equation two, you can calculate alpha and substitute here to find the frictional force. Using equations 1, 2 and 3, we have from the first equation, yes, you can be written as minus f by m and substitute here, ac minus r alpha, r alpha will be equal to 2f by m. A C minus R alpha is equal to A. Equation number three. That is equal to A. A is given. So, we are getting minus 3 F by M is equal to A. So, F we are getting minus M A by 3. So, negative sign signifies that our assumed direction should be reversed. Physically, it is evident that the force of friction acting on the disc is directed towards right. That is the idea. And its magnitude is equal to ma by 3. Answer. Once you get the force of friction, then Acceleration of the center of mass of the disc we can calculate. AC is equal to minus F by M, but force you are getting this much, minus into minus plus that is A by 3 answer. In alpha, when you are getting F equal this much, minus MA by 3 and that is equal to or once you get AC, you can substitute here to get the alpha in this well, so you can get. Or you can substitute the force of friction here to get alpha. In both the ways you can get some answer. F is equal to minus ma by 3 is equal to m or alpha by 2. In this way, we are getting alpha is equal to so, A by 3 R minus. Minus and signifies that alpha will be in reverse direction. So, alpha will be in reverse direction. This is the direction of alpha and this should be the direction of the force of friction. Or if you substitute the value of AC in this problem, in this equation, we can get AC minus R alpha is equal to A. AC is equal to A by 3 minus R alpha will be equal to A. So, alpha will be equal to minus 2A by 3 by R is equal to minus 2A by 3R. Are you not getting seven, sir? So, in this way, this is an exciting problem. To use the force equation, the torque equation and the kinematics of rolling. We can also ask the minimum coefficient of friction required for pure rolling in this case. Find the minimum coefficient of static friction for pure rolling. To solve this problem, we need to write the equation force equation along y direction, which tells that the net force along y direction is equal to n minus mg, that is equal to m into acceleration of the center of mass along y direction, that is equal to 0. 
So in this way, we are getting normal reaction is equal to weight of the body. Then another one equation we have to write that is none other than law of static friction. Who starts that? The static frictional force is less than or equal to the limiting static friction. That is equal to mu s into n and you substitute the value of n. Two additional equations you need to write. The first equation along y direction and the law of static friction. F s. We have got F s that is equal to m by 3 is less than mu s n is equal to m g. So, you are getting mu s should be greater than equal to a by 3 g. So, minimum value of the coefficient of static friction required for pure rolling is equal to a by 3 g that is the answer. Sometimes this problem can be asked in a slightly different way. When the acceleration of this plank is given, no need of giving the force acting on the plank. Now, instead of acceleration of the plank, let us apply force f on the plank in right hand rightward direction and that is given. Instead of acceleration the force is given which is acting on the plank and its mass should be mentioned now. Let us assume that its mass is m and disk mass is small m. The thrust problem find the acceleration accelerations both AC and alpha, linear accelerations of the bodies means both disc and plank and static force of friction acting if The disc rolls perfectly. Let us assume that the ground is smooth. Then you may add some other questions for this find minimum value of mu s. To solve this problem, we have to write the force equation of the disc along x direction, along y direction, torque equation of the disc along z direction. Additional equation you need to write that is the force equation on the plank along with the law of static friction if you intend to calculate the minimum coefficient of static friction. Let us draw the body and write the equation first. On the disk, let us assume that the force of friction be directed towards the right. If we assume like this, on the plank the force of friction will be directed towards left. gravity of the disc, normal reaction acting on the disc, normal reaction acting on the plank due to the disc and normal reaction acting on the plank from the ground and this and weight of the plank. Let us assume that the acceleration of the disc is A1, axis of the plank is 
A2 and angular axis of the disc is alpha. These are all assumed direction. Bold arrow, force. Bold arrows are representing the forces. Normal arrows represent the acceleration. If you need velocity, you can write dotted arrows. The abid is complete now. Let us write the force equation on the disc. Let us write the force equation on the disc. Along x direction, the force acting is F s and that is equal to m into a 1. Along y direction, the force will be n minus m g and that is equal to 0 because along y direction, the disc is not at all accelerate, accelerating. The disc does not accelerate along the y direction. After force equation, let us write the torque equation on the disc. Along jet direction about the center of mass. Normal reaction the gravity, the pass through the center of mass of the disc, therefore, they cannot produce a torque above the center of mass. The torque is produced by the force of friction. And we have assumed the force of friction in right or direction. It will produce a torque in anticlockwise direction, but we have assumed alpha in clockwise direction. If you do not like it, you can assume in opposite direction also. But according to my assumption, I have to write the diagram. I have to write the equations. I have drawn the FBD by assuming all the directions. These directions of the accelerations are assumed. Accordingly, we have to write the equation. Let us write the torque equation of the disk about the z axis which passes through the center of mass. The tau c is equal to i c into alpha. Tau c is equal to frictional force will produce anti-clockwise torque that is equal to f s into r. If this is a disc, i c is equal to m r square by 2 and alpha, this is plus k k f. Alpha I have taken in negative k k f direction. So, this will give us f s is equal to minus m r alpha by 2. Same set of equations I have written in the last example. Here, we need to write an extra equation for this Planck. For Planck, force equation, net force acting on the Planck is F minus F s and that is equal to mass of the Planck, that is capital M into axis of the Planck. Third is fourth equation. We have four equations and how many unknown quantities? N, F s, alpha, A 1, A 2. A2. Five unknown quantities and four equations. Therefore, we need another one equation and that equation is none other than kinematics of rolling. You stash that. Axis of this point along x direction is equal to axis of this point q along x direction a p x is equal to a q x. Axis of P with respect to C along x direction plus axis of the center of mass of the disk along x direction is equal to axis of Q along x direction. A P C will be equal to minus R alpha. I cap. Its axis is given as A1. I cap. And axis of this point Q we have assumed as a 2 i cap. 
So this gives us a one minus r alpha is equal to a two. Let us now solve all the four, all the five equations to solve for the five unknown quantities. There is a proper procedure of solution also, and that is calculation of the acceleration a one from first equation. A one is equal to f s by m. And substitute a one here. Calculation of a two in fourth equation, and a two will be equal to f minus f s by capital M. Substitute here in the fifth equation. Calculation of alpha from the third equation. So alpha will be equal to Minus two f s by m r and substitute this alpha in fifth equation to obtain the value of the force of friction. That is the standard procedure we follow. While doing so, we will get substituting. A one from equation one A two from equation four and alpha from equation three. In equation five, we obtain F S by M minus R into alpha will be equal to minus two F S by M R is equal to A two. A two will be equal to. F minus F S by capital M. R R will be getting cancelled. Minus into minus plus two F S by M plus F S by M that is three F S by small M. And F S by capital M you take it to the side. And in the right hand side you are left behind with uh, the term F by capital M. So F S three by M plus one by capital M is equal to one by capital M. So F S is equal to F by capital M by three by small M plus one by capital M. You can still simplify this factor. That's equal to F by three capital M plus M. Let us recheck the steps. Here we have left two, so let us put two here. Two F S by capital M. So here you can write two. So F S, if you take common three by small m plus two by capital M is equal to capital F by capital M. So you are getting uh, by M upon three by small m plus uh, two by capital M. So here is a change. Three M plus two into small m. Between denominator and the numerator, you are getting small m. So, this is the answer. Once you get the frictional force, you can get the value of alpha. Alpha. We are getting positive force of friction, so therefore our assumed direction of friction is correct. Alpha will be equal to minus two F S by M R. Substitute F S here. So you are getting minus two. By small m, by r, f into small m, three m plus two small m. 
So it is getting cancelled. So you are getting minus 2f by r by 3m plus 2 small m. The negative sign signifies that we have to alter the direction of alpha. So the alpha will be outward. Answer. Once you get the alpha, we can find the accelerations a 1 and a 2. We have got two quantities f s and alpha. Substituting f s in equation 1, we are getting a 1 is equal to f s by m. But what is f s? f small m by 3 m plus 2 small m by m is getting cancelled. So, this is equal to f by 3 capital M plus 2 small m answer. And substituting a 1 and alpha you can get a 2 or substituting f s in this equation you are getting a 2 f minus f s that is equal to f into m by 3 m plus uh, 2 small m is equal to m into a 2. So, 3 m plus 2 small m minus m by 3 m plus 2 small m into f is equal to m into a 2. So, a 2 will be equal to f into 3 m plus small m by m by 3 m plus 2 m answer. This is a more interesting problem. If the force is given, you need to write some extra steps, but if the acceleration of the plank that is a 2 is given, then the problem will be simpler and will be falling under the standard of uh, your so called men's and if the force acting on the plank will be given, this will fall in the category of the problems for advanced level.